Welcome back guys, this is a bonus video to the Revit Basic Walls video series. If you haven't seen that four part series, be sure to check that out on this channel and subscribe for more regularly released Revit content. So let's add some 2D details to these walls. If we go to the Annotate tab and the Detail panel, we have the 2D Detail component. If you select Detail component, you can load some in. So let's select yes. Let's go up to our library and we have the detail items folder. So if I select that and for our walls, we want the masonry folder, which is F. And then I can go to brick block walling, which is the F10 folder. And you can select from a number of these 2D details. Now, when you go to open one of these, they may come with a type catalog. A type catalog is all the different variants of that item. The brick weep doesn't have a type catalog. The brick section doesn't have a type catalog, but the block section does have a type catalog. What you need to do is select all of them. What you can do is select any one of these and then load them into your project. So you can use the control key to select as many as you want. And for the others, it doesn't matter because there's only one type and then you can select OK. And that loads them into the project. So now I have a brick and then I can change this to a block and I can change this one to a weep brick, which is quite nice for our detail. Now these line rates are quite thick, so let's edit those line rates. So I go, I select one of the families, I go to edit the family, and then I can select my filled region boundary. I can edit the boundary select the line types and this is on heavy lines so let's change this to medium lines and select tick and then i can load that back into the project let's do the same for the others so those details are loaded in let's put our weep brick in place so let's move that to be at the grade and let's move it up by 150 so that'll be in that in place so what we're going to do is go to the annotate component and then we're going to create a repeating detail component so if we select that we're going to edit type and we're going to rename this to bricks repeating and then I'm going to select the brick that we had earlier. So let's scroll down to brick sections. That's the standard size under the detail line. And then for the layout, I'm going to use fill available space and then select OK. So with that selected, I can draw a line of bricks in any direction and it would automatically fill in that line with the brick detail. So let's draw that in place from this corner going all the way up to the top and let's do the same for our blocks now that both of those are in we can in theory hide our wall so if you select our wall we can hide in view elements so let's create some engineering blocks which are going to go below our damp proofing so what I'm going to do now is create the engineering bricks which are going to sit below our damp proofing layer so let's go back to the annotate let's go to the detail component repeating and make sure it's on bricks repeating and then i'm going to draw my bricks down to sit on some foundations then i'm going to right click that detail override graphics in view by element then i'm going to add a background color in so i'm going to choose solid fill go to color and i'm just going to choose a light gray 192 and then hit ok so one last thing for this tutorial i'm going to add is the insulation so under the annotate tab the details i'm going to select insulation and then i'm going to change the width to 50 millimeters and then i'm going to change the location line to far side and then i'm going to run my insulation from the top right down to the bottom so that looks quite nice i'm going to do the same on the other side just by mirroring my details so i can do a selection over all of it i can filter i can undo the reveals undo the wall suites and undo the wall 
So I only have five detail items and the insulation shown. Then I can select OK. And then I can go to the mirror button and then draw axis. And then I can select the midpoint of my floor and I can mirror my detailing. And if I wanted to, I can select the wall, right click, hide in view, element. And that hides the wall in lieu of the 2D detailing. Hi guys, this is Matthew from the future. Whilst I'm editing this, I forgot to mention that if you do hide the 3D geometry from the wall, then you're going to lose the tags because the wall holds the information and the tags are assigned to the information in that wall. When you copy a detail that's been modified in the view, it doesn't retain the override. So we have to right click, override graphics in view by element. And then I'm going to add a solid fill to the background and gray 192. Now this is the first step of doing your detailing for your section views. Let's go back to the plan one more time. And I'm going to show you the callouts. So on the view, you can go to call out and what you can do is either sketch a call out or use the built-in rectangle tool. So I'm going to use the built-in tool and then I'm going to do a call out in this location here. And what you can do is select your call out, right click it and then go to view. Now one thing I'm going to add is a break line. So I go to insert, I go to load family and then I go up to my annotations folder and then I select the break line, detail items break line. And then I go to my components and I select the break line in my list. And then you can space bar to rotate it and then you can place that in place and the same on the other side. If it is the wrong way around you can select it and you can press the space bar and that flips it to the other side. And we can do the same for our detailing. So let's add the insulation. We are on 50 millimeters. Let's go and change that to near side and then we can draw that in place. One thing we can do is select chain and that enables us to continue drawing our insulation bats all the way around. Now the other thing we can do is tidy up some of the junctions if they are incorrect. So let's tidy up the cavity where the door is. So I'm going to select the door, I'm going to edit type and for the cavity closer depth I'm going to change it to 50 and hit OK. For the plasterboard, I'm going to return that to meet the door frame. So let's go to the view tab. I'm going to use the cut profile. And for the cut profile, you need to select independent layer you want to use. So I'm going to select the plasterboard and then you have the drawing functions and then you're going to draw what you want to add in place. Turn this to thin lines again for better clarity. So I'm going to draw my plasterboard in so that's the extension of the plasterboard. One thing to note is that this arrow specifies which side you want to keep. So it's currently pointing inwards to where I want to keep the plasterboard. So that's the correct location. You can select it to flip it the other way around and it would delete this section of plasterboard. So let's flip that inwards and then we can tip. We can also bring our insulation through to meet that plasterboard. The other thing that I want to do is modify the threshold by going to modify, select the line work tool, and then changing the line type to invisible lines. And then I can select the return angle, and then I can select the base and that modifies the threshold. Let's go around and touch up the insulation and add some detailing for our bricks and blocks in plan. Okay, so now we have some very basic detailing. Let's go back into the visibility graphics overrides. Let's go into the 
edit host layers let's change our structure down as it's a little bit overwhelming in this view so let's go with three let's change our substrate to two and let's leave the rest at one and then select OK. So let's go into our visibility graphics override. Let's scroll down to the detail items and open that up. Let's select all of the subcategories, change it to three. Okay, hit apply. And that seems to work much better. Let's draw some annotations. We can go to the annotate, we can tag by category, we can tab and select our wall and tab and select the wall on the other side. So the next thing we're going to do is add some text notes. Now one thing to check is the crop boundary. I usually turn off the annotation cropping, which is here. And that allows me to create some text in any position. So let's go to text. I'm going to add text here for brick. I'm going to add text here, block, and so on. I'm also going to change our infamous column back to concrete. And finally, I'm going to tidy it up with some additional line work and some dimensions. So under the annotate tab, I'm going to go to detail lines. I'm going to make sure this is on my preferred lines. So I'm going to use wide lines in this case as the tutorial is a blank template. Then I'm going to make sure my column really stands out. And then I'm going to go to the dimensions and I'm going to set some dimensions. And that concludes the Revit Basic Wars video series. Please do watch the other videos in this series and be sure to like, comment and hit that subscribe button for more regularly released Revit content. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.